Hey everybody, Patrick from Gold Bio here. This is the second video in our Growth Factor series presented by Dr. Dave Ornitz. If you haven't watched part one, please click the link on the screen to catch up. So without further ado, back to Dr. Ornitz. Okay, welcome back. Uh, here I'm going to talk about examples of diseases associated with mutations in FGFs and FGF receptors. Recall what FGFs are and why they are important. FGFs are a family of secreted protein molecules. FGFs function in the development of many tissues and organs. FGFs signal through a family of high affinity protein tyrosine kinase receptors. And the activity and diffusion of FGFs is regulated through binding to extracellular heparin sulfate molecules. This talk will provide basic information about diseases associated with mutations in FGFs and FGF receptors. The following questions will be addressed. Why are FGFs and FGF receptors important? What are examples of diseases caused by mutations in FGF receptors? How does FGF signaling impact development? What functions and diseases are associated with endocrine FGFs? How is FGF signaling involved in cancer? Mutations in FGF receptors cause inherited phenotypes and diseases. Shown here is the active signaling complex of a wild-type FGF receptor complexed with heparin sulfate and FGF. This leads to moderate levels of cell signaling. However, if we have a mutation in the FGF receptor, such as this S252W mutation in the linker region between Ig domain 2 and Ig domain 3, this activates or overactivates the FGF receptor and still allows the receptor to bind to FGF ligands, which can further increase its activity. This mutation, if it occurs in humans, can lead to a disease called Apert syndrome, in which children that are born with this syndrome and have these mutations in FGF receptor 2 develop a premature fusion of the cranial sutures, which leads to abnormal shape of the skull, and they also have abnormalities in their hands and feet. If, on the other hand, we have a mutation G380R in the extracellular, in the transmembrane domain of FGF receptor 3, this also allows the receptor to respond to FGF, but modestly activates FGF receptor 3. And this leads to a disease called achondroplasia, which is the most common form of dwarfism in humans. If we see a mutation in the tyrosine kinase domain of FGF receptor 3, such as K650E, this very strongly activates the receptor, but still allows it to respond to FGF ligands. And if we see a mutation called R248C in the extracellular domain, this allows the receptor to be strongly activated independent of FGF ligands by forming a disulfide-linked dimer. Either of these two mutations, if they occur in FGF receptor 3, they cause a disease called thanatophoric dysplasia, which is a lethal form of skeletal dwarfism. And children born with this mutation survive only a, a few days at most after birth. So this is generally a lethal disease. Mutations in canonical FGFs cause inherited phenotypes and diseases. An example of this is, can be seen in different breeds of dogs, where it's been found that dogs that have chondrodysplastic phenotypes actually overexpress fibroblast growth factor 4, and this leads to a disease similar to achondroplasia in which they have a form of short-limbed dwarfism. Over on the, on the left side, you can see an example of chondrodysplastic dogs compared to normal breeds of dogs. Another example is a mutation in FGF8 in humans, which causes hypogonadic hypogonadism, which affects reproductive ability of these uh, affected patients. Mutations in endocrine FGFs cause inherited and acquired diseases as well. An example of this is a disease called hypophosphatemic rickets, which was associated with mutations in fibroblast growth factor 23. This leads to abnormal loss of phosphate 
because of FGF 23's action on the kidney, and this leads to uh, weak bones and bending of bones, which is characteristic of rickets. The endocrine FGFs have been described in several different uh, systems. FGF 23, which I just mentioned, is a factor that's made in bone and it signals to ki kidney and regulates phosphate homeostasis. FGF 19 is a molecule that's made in the intestine and it signals to the liver and it regulates bile acid production. And FGF 21 is a molecule made in the liver and it signals to adipose tissue and it regulates uh, fatty acid uh, metabolism in adipose tissue. FGF signaling and cancer. So FGF signaling has been implicated in the etiology and pathogenesis of many human and animal cancers. FGF receptor 1 gene amplification is found in 22% of lung squamous cell uh, carcinomas. FGF receptor 1 or FGF receptor 2 gene amplification is found in 47% of hormone-resistant prostate cancers. FGF receptor 2 activating mutations are a cause of gastric, endometrial, and breast cancer. FGF receptor 3 mutations are a cause of multiple myeloma, bladder, and cervical cancer. And FGF receptor 4 mutations are found in gastric cancer and adrenocortical uh, tumors. The FGF pathway can also be used as a therapeutic target. So in the case of cancer therapeutics, small molecule inhibitors of the FGF receptor tyrosine kinase domain are being tested. Ligand traps in which soluble extracellular versions of the FGF receptor are introduced where they can bind to FGF ligands and present, prevent them from binding to the endogenous receptor on cancer cells. And inhibitory antibodies are being tested that bind to the receptor or the ligand and prevent ligand receptor interactions. FGFs are used therapeutically to treat injured tissue such as diabetic ulcers and oral mucositis. FGFs are being considered for use as pro-angiogenic factors for the treatment of vascular disorders. FGFs are being evaluated for use as cardioprotective factors. So in summary, FGFs are a family of secreted protein molecules. Mutations in FGFs and FGF receptors cause inherited phenotypes and diseases. Activation of FGF signaling pathways can cause cancer. The FGF pathway is a potential therapeutic target for tissue repair and for cancer. And I would like to again thank you for watching this video. More information can be found in the review shown below. And I also thank Gold Biotechnology for sponsoring and producing this video. Thanks for watching. Give us a like if you liked this video or leave a comment below if you have something to say about it. Uh, we've got a lot of great content on our YouTube channel if you want to check out some other videos. Uh, and we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. Thanks.